multiply decimals and whole numbers using expanded form. We know from fourth grade how to multiply two whole numbers using expanded form. The link is in the description box below. Let's refresh our memory and then we can return to decimals. We have 4 times 28. Let's draw an area model. It is a rectangle with sides of 4 and 28. The area of this rectangle represents the product of 4 times 28. Now we divide the rectangle into two smaller rectangles. We break up 28 to make 20 and 8. We rewrite 28 in expanded form as 20 plus 8. Then we multiply using the distributive property of multiplication. We multiply 4 times 20, which is the area of the first smaller rectangle. Then we multiply 4 times 8, which is the area of the second smaller rectangle. We get 80 and 32 as the partial products. We add them up to find the total area or the product of 4 and 28. So 4 times 28 equals 112. Now let's go back to decimals. The numbers are similar, but instead of 28, we have 2.8. What should we do? We'll do the same thing. First, let's draw the area model. It is the rectangle with sides of 4 and 2.8. We label the sides. One side is 4, and the other side is 2.8. Don't pay attention to the fact that 2.8 looks bigger than side 4. It doesn't matter in this kind of problem. We're just going to draw the same rectangle, but the numbers will be different. The area of this rectangle represents the product of 4 times 2.8. That's what we need, right? Like in the previous example, let's divide the rectangle into two smaller rectangles. We break up 2.8 into 2 and 0 0.8. In fact, we separated the whole and decimal parts. Let's rewrite 2.8 in expanded form as 2 and 0 0.8. Now we multiply using the distributive property of multiplication. We multiply 4 times 2, which is the area of the first smaller rectangle. Now we multiply 4 times 0 0.8, which is the area of the second smaller rectangle. We get 8 and 3.2 as the partial products. We add them up to find the total area, or the product of 4 and 2.8. So 4 times 2.8 equals 11.2. Now let's take more difficult examples. 16 times 24. Both factors are two-digit whole numbers. Let's multiply them and then get back to the decimals. We start by drawing the area model. It's a rectangle with sides of 16 and 24. The area of this rectangle represents the product of 16 times 24. This time, we're going to divide the rectangle into four smaller rectangles. We break up 16 into 10 and 6 using a horizontal line. You can break it up another way, like 8 and 8, but I chose 10 and 6. Then we break up 24 into 20 and 4 using a vertical line. We rewrite 16 in expanded form as 10 plus 6 and 24 as 20 plus 4. Then we multiply using the distributive property of multiplication. We multiply 10 times 20, which is the area of the first smaller rectangle. Then we multiply 10 times 4, which is the area of the second smaller rectangle. Next, we multiply 6 times 20, which is the area of the third smaller rectangle. Finally, we multiply 6 times 4, which is the area of the fourth smaller rectangle. We get 200. 40, 120, and 24 as the partial products. We add them up to find the total area or the product of 16 and 24. So the answer is 384. Now let's go back to decimals. The numbers are similar, but instead of 24, we have 2.4. We are going to multiply a two-digit whole number and a decimal. What should we do? We do the same thing. We start by drawing the area model. It's a rectangle with sides of 16 and 2.4. Again, don't pay much attention to the fact that 2.4 looks bigger than 16. It doesn't matter in these problems. The area of this rectangle represents the product of 16 times 2.4. Like in the previous example, 
Let's divide the rectangle into four smaller rectangles. We break apart 16 into 10 and 6. We break apart 2.4 into 2 and 0 0.4. We separated the whole and decimal parts for our convenience. Let's rewrite 16 in expanded form as 10 plus 6 and 2.4 as 2 plus 0 0.4. Now we can multiply using the distributive property of multiplication. We multiply 10 times 2, which is the area of the first smaller rectangle. Next, we multiply 10 times 0 0.4, which is the area of the second smaller rectangle. Now we multiply 6 times 2, which is the area of the third smaller rectangle. Finally, we multiply 6 times 0 0.4, which is the area of the fourth smaller rectangle. We get 20, 4, 12, and 2.4 as the partial products. We add them up to find the total area, or the product of 16 and 2.4. So the answer is 38.4. Let's do another example. 18 times 0 0.56. To start, we draw the area model like always. It is a rectangle with the sides of 18 and 0 0.56. The area of this rectangle represents the product of 18 times 0 0.56. Now we can divide the rectangle into four smaller rectangles. We break up 18 into 10 and 8. And we also break up 0 0.56 into 0 0.5 and 0 0.06. This way, we separated the decimal part into tenths, which is 0 0.5, and the hundredths, which is 0 0.06. We rewrite 18 in expanded form as 10 plus 8, and 0 0.56 as 0 0.5 plus 0 0.06. Now we can multiply using the distributive property of multiplication. First, we multiply 10 times 0 0.5, which is the area of the first smaller rectangle. Next, we multiply 10 times 0 0.06, which is the area of the second smaller rectangle. Now we multiply 8 times 0 0.5, which is the area of the third smaller rectangle. Finally, we multiply 8 times 0 0.06, which is the area of the last smaller rectangle. We get 5. 0 0.6, 4, and 0 0.48 as the partial products. We add them up to find the total area or the product of 18 and 0 0.56. So the answer is 10.08. If you thought this video was helpful, please leave a like. For more videos like this, please subscribe.